Welcome to jobskillshare.org. Today, I want to talk about this software, which I started making videos years ago, six years ago. I was making video for iTalk, which was kind of like a classroom management system. And this is my earliest projects when I was uh, recording videos on YouTube, um, where my first few projects were to find a software where I can control students uh, and uh, actually help the teachers where they wanted to uh, you know maybe give it some message or maybe lock out screens during the lecture or maybe they wanted to type a link because the links were too long at that time um, and then students would make mistakes and that's just you know a waste time and stuff like that so um, they needed a software where they wanted to control everything but you know of course they wanted for uh, this for free and there was a really cool software it's called italk and seven eight and uh, even ten you know i i kind of like made it work with it but most of the time you know with the 10 operating system it kind of stopped they stopped the development and i don't know what happened but this new uh company i guess took over vion 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 however you want to pronounce it it is still free and open source which is the the best part of this one and it is compatible with Linux and Windows so in this video I'm going to continue my my videos like I did before and now this time we are going to actually call it beyond and we are going to see is it really uh, the same or is it still uh, buggy and stuff like that it was buggy in the beginning but it was really cool I mean once you get it working it was extremely good pro product uh, I had a lot of fun with it so hopefully maybe if you're a teacher you're a IT administrator or you're an IT instructor Structure, you know, there's a lot of IT instructors that teach stuff. So this may be a really good software to use. So in our lab, what we have is two Windows 10 machines, and both are uh, uh, are on work group. Remember, if you don't know about work group, uh, this is kind of like a mach two machines, separate machines. There's there's no management going on. These are not in a Active Directory environment. Now with this software, they also came up with. Active Directory integration, which is really cool because if you have, if you're working this and you want to deploy this in a big environment, you don't have to do the things that I'm going to do in my first videos. Now, in my later videos, I am going to show you the advanced configuration for this software also. So, in this one, we are just going to test it. We have two machines. One I'm going to call a teacher on the right side, and student on the left side. What did I did before, uh, you know, creating these machines? They, you need to make sure the names are different. This is a teacher, this is a student. Now this machine is a work group machine, meaning these two know that they are in the same network, but no one can access each other. Both have different usernames and stuff like that. So the main thing about this, you need to make same username on both machines. This is the method that I'm using today and I wanna see if it works. Now there are many other methods that this will work. So we are, we are starting just with the username same on the same machine. So if you're a teacher, you will have the same username on the other machine with the same password. So let me log in to the teacher machine first and we need to set up uh, this uh, software. Okay, so you will log in. I'm gonna log into the student also with the same username and password and now we are in this teacher machine right now. The first thing you need to do is to go to Internet Explorer. We're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and open it. And we are going to go to this site, Vion, v, Vion .io. So, um, I don't know why I always do don't recommend one. You shouldn't do that, though. I just want to make this thing quick. So, all right, we're going to type that and type IO and now we're going to download that software right here. The first page, you will see a download. I'm going to do Windows. They have two. One is the beta version, one is the stable. So we're going to do beta maybe in the next videos just to see new features. But for this one, we're going to keep it uh, the stable. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and make sure you have admin rights. Of course, you just created the two accounts. There has to be the same, same admin rights. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run it. If you get that message, that's fine. I already tested this. It's a clean software. And we're going to go ahead and run it. Okay. Now you're going to click on next. Agree to your terms. Next. And this is where the key is. You need to make sure that if the teacher, the teacher has to be the master, right? Because they need to control it. So you make sure that this is checked and you will install that on this machine right now. So this is getting installed. And there you go. You'll see some black... 
you know, CMD commands and stuff like that. That will go away and then that's it. Now the first thing you need to do is to run Beyond Configurator. You will just click on that run and we can, okay. So here's the key about this software that there are many ways that you can configure it. Like I said, LDAP, you can now configure it through your company's uh, domain, username and password and stuff like that, which is going to be advanced. But in this video, we are going to do access control and make sure the access uh, grants grant access to every authenticated user. Now, this is default, right? I'm meaning anyone that is going to be authenticated on this machine will have the access just to see if this this thing is working this whole software we are going to use this first method today now if you want to restrict it you can also click on restrict access to the members of certain group now you as an admin when you created that account you are already an administrator so you will click on this and just move this to the right side and click on apply and and that's it you will be then it will be restricted this this software will be restricted to these uh, usernames only but in this case, we we're just trying this out. If is, is it really going to work? Is it, are we going to see the other machine? Can we lock it by just doing the authenticated one? Then you will do that. If you want to do more advanced, and of course, when you configure the LDAP one, this means that you don't need to create anything over here. Once you do that and you enable the usage of domain groups, you can actually create a domain administrator account over here. It will be populated, and then you can move it over here, and then that's it. And that will be really cool because then you can you don't have to do too much when you deploy the clients to other 20 machines, 100 machines. That's really up to you. So what are we going to do first? We need to go to rooms. We, we don't have any rooms first. We need to create, create a room. So when you click on that here, let's just create a class one. And now in class one, we are going to create the first machine. We're going to call it student. Now remember that the name of that machine needs to match this because right here, this is the host name. You can even put more like Mac address and stuff like that um, if things are not matching up uh, correctly. But in this case, we're just going to put the host student just to see if it's going to work with just finding the host um, right there. OK, if it's on the same network, you're on the same network. I think this should work because student will be in the same network. So that is done right there. And we're going to click on apply and we're going to click yes. And then this will restart the services one more time. And that's it from the configurator. We will close that. And oh, there's one, one more thing we need to make sure I'm going to close this also let's open the configurator one more time and just uncheck that one option because we're just going for authentication method only there's a key option also if you click on authentication make sure you uncheck this one you can keep this 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 means that you can create a key without doing all the other authentication you create a key and then you when you go to this machine the student one you can import that key and then it will work that's something we're going to do uh, next. But in this one, well, let's just keep it simple. We're going to click on apply again because we made a change. And now uh, that is done. So we're configuring our master machine right now to make sure is it working. Now to test it, you need to click on test here and make sure you put the password. And that's it. It says right there the, the authentication was successful. I didn't do anything. I mean, the main thing is I, I made sure that this admin account in this machine, same password, and this admin account on this machine has the same password, the same username. That is all I'm doing on this, on, in these two machines. Both don't know anything about each other other than that they are on the same network. They don't share anything else, okay? So now uh, another main piece in this, in this computer you need to make sure is that the RDP needs to be open. So when you go to the system and here, you need to make sure you go to the change settings and go to the remote settings and here this needs to be enabled okay you can enable both on this one too but this needs to be enabled for your computer to start talking to other computers so we're gonna go ahead and click and close this and if we come across some issues we'll try to resolve it right in this video so now we need to move on to the student uh, computer okay and in the student computer we need to do the same thing we need to go to internet and then download the same software and now this time we need to uncheck the master because we just need client on it now remember if you uh, want you don't if you don't want to do this process like this then of course you should put it in the share drive or maybe uh, in the USB or something like that and you can just plug that into that computer and then download the same software like this we're gonna go ahead and run it and 
once this is done we are going to run that on the same way like on the other ones we did go ahead and run it minimize this yes and now we are going to click on next agree next and this time uncheck that because we are controlling this machine now and once this is done we are going to do the same thing same process okay now we're gonna go ahead and finish it and what we need to do is to go to authentication make sure that this is uh, this one is unchecked and the other one is to make sure that we go down to access control this is okay we're gonna click on apply and click yes so that's it you have done the configuration part of it now let's see if it's going to work we do get some problems with this we need to try to fix it then so this computer is running that service this is a student right now I logged in as a teacher and I'm gonna go ahead and open my master uh, software you see it, it's asking you for the password I hope it works there you go and now that means that it didn't give you an error and it is working uh, to get into the software now this is the master you see right here if you have like let's say 200 machine right here in this box area then you with one click you can control all the machines you can lock all the machines you can power on all the machines you can reboot all the machines you can power down all the machines you can log out everybody in just one click you can send them a message from here you can run a program and do all these kind of things so go to this the, the classroom and this is where your classrooms are going to be click on the classroom on the bottom and then if you have many classroom of course you will be it will be in a different uh, folder but we created only one when you click on it you see that the student um, is going to be establishing a connection right now as soon as you open it it should have established a connection and there you go without me doing anything in this computer I just did I just installed the service and make sure that RDP is also enabled just like in this one meaning that being giving it the same username and password it was it was able to authenticate itself over here if you change that then it's not going to work so that is the key for it to work okay so right now i can right click on this machine i can go to text and say hello you can actually mess with people over here and then you can just enter that and you see the hello just showed up over there i can right click on it and I can log this user out let's do lock I can lock this machine when I click on it boom that machine is locked out right now you can't do anything over here okay if you are a student and the other thing is that the people that are going to be logging into this machine will have limited rights also so they won't be able to change your settings uh, like in a master settings or anything like that so uh, then you can unlock it right here and if you want to do a demo you can actually show this screen to them you can click on this and this will create a demo you see right now they, they're seeing my screen and I think this is extremely good because as an instructor you want to do things like that you know you have 24 machines 24 people are looking at your screen and then at one click you can have them see your uh, screen like that that is awesome uh, for free and now other thing is that let's say for example you want to open a, a browser remember one of the things about communication is like you put something on a blackboard or something like that or maybe you send an email to people and in the email is the the link is extremely big uh if it's an email then they can copy paste it but if you tell them that hey go to this link blah 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 blah, blah then people do mistakes and that just takes time you know all you have to do is to google and then have them uh open to google there you go i just opened the google on their machine okay and now i can if, if the if this uh course is done or maybe I want to take a screenshot of a, an error on the machine for a student so I can take a screenshot and it will save it to one of my folders over here if I want to log them out I can just click on log out and that's it they're logged out so hopefully this video is great uh, video f uh, f where we left a few years ago but I talk and I want to say thank you to Vion they I'm not getting paid for this or anything like that I just want to say thank you because I've been doing this for so many years and I was always go to this site and I was like hey you know what happened to them um, I just I hope that the the original uh, creators are good well and I want to again say thank you to I'll talk for providing these type of open source and free softwares to help a lot of people and now they are beyond you see that icon change too so thank you again hopefully you guys are making some great uh, additions to it like LDAP is getting uh, integrated right now and I am I can't wait for it to uh, try that out also and I will show you that in my videos but before that if you cannot wait for my videos go to the documentation over here 
and then read the documentation uh, if you are want to deploy this in your area or you're going to do a forum and then they will have forum right here make sure you write them something and if you like this video tell them that i came from jobscreshare.org and we all we all are happy okay thank you so much for watching this video hope you guys liked it use it see if you can come up with something that will help you all right thanks